probably come across at least one person in your life who constantly drones on about how bad video games are for children, but new studies seem to indicate otherwise. According to research, children who play more video games have the upper hand on their mental responses over other kids who don't. In today's video, we'll be taking a closer look at this study and a lot more. So let's dive right in. Starting off, video games may be associated with better cognitive performance. A recent study involving over 2,000 kids stated that children who admitted to playing video games for at least three hours a day outperformed those who'd never played them. The kids were tested on their working memory and in pulse control. This study, which was just published in JAMA Network Open, examined data from the Continuing Adolescent Brain Cognitive Development Study. It's funded by the National Institute on Drug Abuse and other national institutes of health organizations. Nora Volko, MD, the director of NIDA, stated that this study contributes to our expanding understanding of the links between playing video games and brain development. She further added that video gaming has been linked to better cognitive performance, as shown in several studies on behavioral and mental health issues, and their most recent study only further shows that the well-liked activity may have even more cognitive advantages. The neurological processes that link video games and cognitive behavior have been the subject of research, though we should mention that these aren't fully understood yet, however they aren't fully understood. Moving on, here's how the researchers carried out the study. Researchers from the University of Vermont Burlington examined data from children who participated in the ABCD study between the ages of 9 and 10. These kids were divided into two groups, those who said they never played video games at all, and those who said they played them for at least three hours per day. The cutoff was chosen once it was above the American Academy and Pediatrics recommendations for screen time, which limits the time children spend playing video games to one or two hours per day. The researchers assessed the children's performance on two tasks for each group, looking at both their brain activity during the activities and their capacity to regulate impulsive behavior and recall information. They discovered that kids who admitted to playing video games for three or more hours a day performed cognitive tests faster and more accurately than kids who never played. They also noticed that the variations in brain activity between the two groups matched the differences in cognitive function. Children who played video games for three or more hours per day had increased brain activity in areas of the brain linked to attention and memory than children who never played, according to functional MRI brain imaging studies. Plus, children who played video games for at least three hours per day had decreased activity in the visual regions of the brain and increased activities in the frontal brain areas linked to higher order cognitive activities. Following up, what have the researchers concluded from the results? The researchers think these patterns may result from playing cognitively challenging video games. These can practice skills linked to impulse control and memory, and doing so may result in higher performance on related tasks. Also, the relatively low activity in visual regions among kids who admitted to playing video games may indicate that this region of the brain becomes more adept at processing visual information because of repeated practice through video games. This study didn't uncover any correlations between video gaming and increases in depression, violence, or aggressive conduct. This is contrary to what's been shown in other studies. Even though children who reported playing video games for three or more hours per day showed more behavioral and mental health problems than children who didn't play video games, the researchers discovered that this association wasn't statistically significant. This meant that they couldn't be sure whether the trend reflected a real association or was just a coincidence. They point out that as the kids become older, this will be an important measure to observe and understand. Next up, what factors weren't addressed by the study? The researchers emphasized that cause and effects analysis wasn't possible in this cross-sectional study and that kids who excel at these kinds of cognitive activities may naturally choose to play video games. They also highlighted that their findings didn't support the idea that kids should have unrestricted access to TV, computers, or smartphones, and that results are likely highly dependent on the activities that kids choose to perform. For example, they think that various video game genres such as action adventure, puzzle solving, sports, or shooting games many have varied impacts on neurocognitive development, but the study didn't analyze the specific changes based on the genres. The main author of the study, Bader Chirani, PhD, assistant professor of psychiatry at the University of Vermont, noted that they can't conclusively state if playing video games a lot led to better neurocognitive function, but their findings were still quite optimistic and called for more research as these kids enter adolescence and early adulthood. Video games continue to become more popular among young people, as many parents worry about the impacts they may have
have on their children's health and development. And so, it's critical that we better understand both the potential benefits and harms of these games. Not to mention, what will the ABCD study be used for? Researchers will be able to do comparable research for the same kids throughout the ABCD study and into early adulthood. These will claim to see whether changes in video game behavior are related to changes in cognitive abilities, brain activity, behavior, and mental health. The research design and extensive data collection will also allow them to better take into consideration several other aspects of the children's families and environments that may have an impact on their cognitive and behavioral development. These include things such as exercise, sleep quality, and so on. The ABCD study, the biggest of its type in the US, follows approximately 12,000 children as they develop into young adults. Magnetic resonance imaging is frequently used by researchers to access participants' brain activity and structure, and they also gather biological samples and psychological, environmental, and cognitive data. It's fair to say that the research being conducted is quite detailed. Moving on, gamers more prone to racism and a recent study states that people who strongly identify themselves as gamers may be more likely to exhibit extreme behaviors like racism and that is supported by the study Identity Fusion and Extremism in Gaming Cultures by Take This, a mental health advocacy group with a specialization in the video game business. The study aimed to better understand the toxicity that has long been recognized to exist in some segments of the video gaming community. It investigated the potential function of identity fusion in problematic gaming groups. If you're unsure what this is, we've got you covered. Identity fusion is defined as a deep, visceral sense of alignment with a group or cause that affects a person's personal life. This can sometimes be so extreme that it forces them to act in a pro-group manner, even when doing so is personally not that great for them. Dr. Rachel Cowart, one of the study's authors, stressed in an interview with Vice that there's no suggestion that the general player population is extreme. She added that the study's findings only apply to a smaller, toxic subset of the gaming community who exhibit signs of gamer culture consuming their personal identities. Following up, is identity fusion unique to gaming, it's crucial to note that, according to the research, identity fusion isn't exclusive to gaming and has been researched in a range of different groups, including members of the military and athletes in competitive sports. It's associated with both pro-social behavior, such as motivation to help others, and antisocial results, such as anger and aggressiveness. But Take This's study indicates that gaming environments may result in extreme identity fusion, since it's believed that shared experiences can effectively promote promote its progression. Identity fusion occurs when the social identity and individual identity combine and become one. They are more prone to more severe behaviors because of the manner the fusion happens. The researcher continued by using the example of a veteran of the military whose professional identity permeates every area of their life. At a certain point, there's no difference between Doug the soldier and Doug the father. So where do we draw the line? Lastly, what other variables interact with fusion identity? Three unique characteristics. Lonely avoidant attachment, and anxious attachment may potentially interact with gaming culture, according to one study. The report refers to gaming communities as a double-edged sword for vulnerable people because of the opportunities for community and social contact they provide. But there's also the presence of some harmful behaviors. The third and concluding study focused on specific communities and discovered that antisocial behavior was more strongly associated with Call of Duty's competitive game than with Minecraft's more cooperative one. The study's conclusion admitted some of its shortcomings, including the fact that it mainly surveyed American gamers and skipped more diverse gaming genres and online communities like Discord and Twitch. That's a wrap for this video. What do you think about the research? Comment below, give this video a thumbs up, and subscribe to our channel for more videos like this. See you in the next one.